Good afternoon. Welcome to the virtual session of European Higher Education Fair 2022. I am Puji Maharani and I will be moderating this session. So today at Auditorium 1, we'll be talking about study in top Nordic universities with speakers from University of Uvascula and Hanken, of, uh, Hanken School of Economics, both in Finland. So University of Uvascula and Hanken Uni School of Economics are both public universities uh, based in Finland, with University of Uvascula is located uh, in the city of Uvascula, while Hanken School of Economics has campuses in the cities of Helsinki, Helsinki and Vasa. For the audience who are joining us on YouTube, feel, uh, feel free to drop your questions on the live chat box and we will respond to them during the question and answers part of the session. Now, without further ado, I would like to start uh, today's talk show by introducing our speakers uh, from the University of Uvascula and the Hampton School of Economics. Okay, we have speakers from, uh, all right, Miss Natalia. Yes, hi, and thank you for hosting this session. I'm really happy to be here today. Uh, so yes, uh, my name is Natalia and I work as marketing coordinator at Hankin School of Economics. It's uh, one of the uh, business schools and the only standalone business school in Finland. And we are located, as fairly mentioned, in Helsinki, which is the capital and in of Finland and in Vasa. And Vasa is considered to be an energy capital of the whole Nordic countries. So welcome. And I would really love to hear as much questions from you as possible. All right, thank you very much. And we also have Ms. Rika from the University of Hifaskula. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Rika, and I work at the University of Uvascula at the Student and Acad Academic Services. Uvascula is located in central Finland, and we are a multidisciplinary university offering several study programs fully in English. As uh, Natalia said, we're really happy to, to hear some questions uh, that you might have about our universities and about studying in Finnish universities in general. All right, thank you very much. Glad to have both of you here. And now without further ado, I would like to start uh, today's talk show session by asking both of our speakers, why do you think should we choose Finland as a study destination? Ms. Rika, you can start. Thank you. Uh, a good starting point. Um, of course, um, I believe um, quite many people and, and prospective applicants have heard the reputation about Finnish education system. Quite often we talk about high quality education and, and of course that would be one of the reasons and the main reasons of course to choose Finland uh, as your study destination, but what it actually mean in practice. Uh, the high, high quality of education. Um, if I think about our universities uh, in Finland, I would say one of the factors that, that makes them of, of so high quality and, and unique as well is, is, is the academic freedom and the possibilities to build your own study parts and, and your own study tracks. So no matter uh, which major you choose, in, in most cases, you have a lot of possibilities to sort of custom make your own uh, uh, experience during your studies. So you can choose uh, from several specialization tracks and, 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 and be the master of, of, of your own study path. So I think that is one of the, 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 you know, a concrete example of what the high quality of education means a possibility to actually um, have an effect on your own, own study path. And um, if I mention a couple of uh, other points as well, uh, uh, I think also um, affordable tuition fees are uh, another factor. Uh, um, why choose Finland as your higher education destination? And uh, we also have quite good scholarships available in, in all our universities. And then overall, I think the standard of living, the possibility to not only study, but to live a, a nice, a comfortable life uh, in a well-functioning society. I think those would be uh, some of the main reasons to, to choose Finland. All right, that sounds encouraging. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Natalia, would you like to add? Uh, yes, and in addition to what Rika has already fairly mentioned, I would like also to highlight that Finland is a egalitarian society and it's also very 
well shown also in the academic perspective and in the academic world. And for students, it's practically means that uh, you will be on the first name basis, for example, with your professors, which may will make you not only a student in the classroom, but also a, almost like an equal partner to the professor when you will be discussing uh, subjects that you will be studying and also that mutual respects both to your to peer students, to the academic staff and also to the staff at the university. I think it's one of the uh, things that make makes Finnish education really special. Uh, and also to highlight, maybe I know that many people might be scared about different studying different languages. And in Finland, we do have two government uh, languages, Finnish and Swedish. It's still when you're a newcomer to Finland, it's very uh, possible to get around with uh, uh, English. Everybody would speak uh, uh, English, even if you are very far away in the Finnish village, you will find a grandmother that also will help you out in case you are lost and would like to find your way back to the city. So it's very possible to get around with English, at least when you are studying. And of course, if you would like to stay in Finland, it's always a good idea to learn local languages. And as Finnish universities and Finnish society are very interested in keeping international talents coming to Finland, uh, many universities take a, and implement integration programs, which will allow you not only to study languages, but also to uh, network in Finland for you then to stay and live a comfortable life. And actually, Finland is very interested in general as a country in keeping the international talents in the country. Okay, well, that sounds very um, encouraging as well, because when we talk about studying overseas, um, especially from uh, Indonesia, a tropical country, when you go all the way to Nordic country, uh, there's a lot to adjust to. There's a lot of things that you need to adapt with. And I think uh, to your point about um, there's so many options uh, to start with in, you know, in the university and then more things to explore culturally, uh, you know, outside of the classrooms. I think Finland does offer a very rich student experience, but I would like to touch more on the cultural aspect of living in Finland, especially as uh, a country that's uh, with, you know, uh, egalitarian, with well-functioning well society. Um, you would welcome uh, people from all sorts of background and they would need to learn to adapt to how the country is being run, how the systems are being run. So how would, uh, how is your university provide the kind of support for uh, international students uh, for them to integrate into the campus and the Finnish society. Uh, all right, Natalia, maybe you can start. Uh, yeah, yes, of course. Uh, uh, so at Hanken, we have uh, uh, a program called Hanken International Talent that allows international students both in Helsinki and in Vasa to integrate into the working life and into the social life of Finland. Uh, at a very, very early stage, we start already during orientation days, we organize a separate session also for the uh, international students and um, exp go you know, Finland crash course, like what you can expect in the nearest coming month. Uh, also, we, our student union actually is very active in um, uh, taking activities with the international students and, you know, making a group, these two groups of Finnish students and international students come together in both social and business related events. Uh, also, yeah, we provide all the information, for example, on study courses, and we actually uh, also in our master's program, we offer a minor in uh, local languages. So you take 25 credits in both Finnish and Swedish, and you may also choose like how you spread this uh, uh, credits if you would like to learn more Finnish or you would like to learn Swedish, but I would say that in our university or in, in all the universities now in Finland, I would say uh, we are doing all we can to make international students feel at home and mm, feel them like that, that, that this is their new home country they would like to stay in. All right, thank you very much. Uh, so, Ms. Rika, you probably want to add? Yeah, I think Natalia already gave excellent examples on, on, on how, how we'll try and welcome all our international students. Mm, I would like to add uh, the orientation programs. I believe that in every single uh, of our universities, when the studies begin, typically um, 
the autumn semester at the end of, of August or at the beginning of September, we, we uh, at the universities have uh, an orientation week or at least orientation days designed to welcome all the international students. We do understand that there are a lot of things that are new in the new environment uh, so that the orientation week and the information that we provide there is designed to help the adjust, adjustment period at the very beginning. Um, we have topics such as Finnish society, uh, the healthcare system, uh, of course, about the local uh, local environment, the city where, where, where they have arrived and, and all that. So there's a lot of, lot of uh, program designed for the orientation week to support the initial phase. I would also like to add that uh, in, in uh, again, I would like to say that I believe that in most of our universities, we have a really nice tutor, peer tutor system. So, so when the new international students arrive in the new city, we actually have peer tutors who, who might go and, and pick them up and meet them at the train station, for instance, and take them to the student apartments, show the grocery stores and help to get around in the new uh, study and, and living environment. So there are a lot of uh, support services organized by the university that will help the international students um, to get adjusted to their new life in, in the new uh, study destination. But one more thing I would also like to add, uh, it's not just, and I, I think also Natalia uh, brought this point up, that we, we don't uh, only expect the international students to adjust to our living environment and our universities. As universities and as cities, uh, we are also, of course, uh, developing and, and enhancing the internationalization all the time. So uh, we have several programs and projects within the university and the whole region to, to, to create the city and the, the whole, for instance, uh, Central Finland in our case, uh, to make it more international. So we don't expect uh, that people who come from other parts of the of the world to our city just to you know get used to how things are here, but we we do understand that that the world is changing. Our we are learning from each other, and and we have several programs such as Talent Hub and International Uvascula in our city uh, projects aiming at creating and and enhancing the internationalization of the whole region. So so we are working. Uh, non-stop to, to make us more international at the same time. All right. Thank you very much. That sounds very insightful on how open the society is uh, to different cultures, also to introduce them uh, the possibilities of uh, experiencing something new, like a different learning experience in an a Nordic University. So we've already touched a little bit on uh, the assistance offered to international or non-EU students uh, when it comes to integrating to the university and the society, but is there any other assistance uh, also offered for them? For example, uh, financial like scholarships or uh, internship programs maybe, uh, anything that's related to uh, enriching their experience, uh, international student experience. Ms. Rita. Uh, yes, indeed. As I uh, mentioned um, before, um, we do have in each university uh, a scholarship system. So, so those students who come from outside of the EU and EEA and who are liable to pay tuition fees, uh, we do have uh, scholarships available for them. So, so that's um, one means of support. And then, as Natalia mentioned before, um, the uh, in Finland, we we uh, seek not only to um, uh, recruit more international students to study in our universities, but, but we hope that more and more of these international graduates would end up working in Finland. And, and as part of, of, of reaching this target, uh, um, for instance, in, in my university, we have several uh, new courses and support services to support the, and enhance the employability of our foreign graduates. So already doing their studies, uh, so we offer um, CV counseling, guidance in the job search, entrepreneurship courses, uh, a lot of support to enhance the employability and, and working life skills. So I think uh, 
so that, that's one good support service, of course, also for inter international students. And um, yeah, I think that in general, especially in the application phase, uh, students who come from outside the EU and EEA, they, they do receive uh, guidance um, with regard to tuition fees, scholarships, but also to the residence permits. So these are questions that are um, different to, to those who come from, from within the EU. So there's a lot of support uh, avail available for international students. Right. Thank you very much. Ms. Natalia, would you like to add? Uh, yes, I would maybe just on a short notice uh, add that uh, a part of the own scholarship that uh, all universities have uh, on their own and provide this financial support for international students coming outside of uh, AO, but also Finland, uh, uh, Finnish universities together with the Ministry of Education and Culture. We have this common joint Finland scholarship that is also to the uh, students who are who have excellent uh, academic, uh, previous academic records. So this is something also that uh, both ministry and universities do actually together. And I think it also highlights quite clearly that uh, Finland as the country would like to support incoming students and international students to come and fix Finland as the study destination. And of course, at Hanken, we also have our own career services for specifically tailor-made for international students and their needs. And uh, as probably as in Ivaskala University, we have uh, courses specifically helping international students on how to, for example, to build up your CV when you would like to apply for the work or how you would like to, like what you can expect from the interview when you are going for the for your first job interview in Finland. What do you think? Should you think of? What should you prepare? And so on. But in general, I would say that, of course, we uh already do quite a lot but i think it's always room for improvement for everything that we how we cater our international students so we are uh, working on that both on our university levels but also in the on the country level all right thank you very much now uh we've already touched upon uh the assistance so uh prospective students would be able to consider what kind of support that they would be receiving by the time they arrived at the university. And now, uh, to elaborate more on that matter, let's talk admissions. So with many disciplines and vast arrays of programs in your universities, what are the most popular majors and in, uni in your university and why are there, uh, why they become the most popular ones? Ms. Natalia, maybe you can start. Uh, yes, uh, uh, that's a very good question because we actually were looking just previous, like last week with our admissions officer, what were the most popular last year uh, application programs. We, as a, we are a business school, we only offer um, business related subjects and business related programs. But what we have seen from last year, that one of the most uh, uh, popular programs for international strategy and sustainability uh, humanitarian logistics and also uh, finance and I think it's actually quite um, uh, mirrors the society that we are now living in because the, we see that economics are changing and we see that the societies are changing and we are also facing diverse crises like wars and also pandemic and and it's really needed the fast response to that. And it's very important to have also graduates and specialists who know how to, in the changing environment, react uh, towards the things. All right, thank you. Uh, Ms. Rita, would you like to add? Yeah, um, well, we are a multidisciplinary university and, and we, we offer actually English thought master's degree programs in all our six faculties. And, um, I would say that, uh, of course, we, we receive a lot of applications to our uh, programs in the School of Business and Economics. So business is always um, interesting for, for uh, many, many applicants from around the world. So, so that's quite clear. But I would also maybe like to highlight um, our faculties of education and psychology as well as the Faculty of Sport and Health Sciences. I think those are something that, that are quite unique uh, here within Finland and in our university and, and popular partly because of that. So I think those are kind of, kind of the flagships, the, the education, um, as, a, as a field is, 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 is very important and, and has uh, roots uh, here at the University of Uvascula. So we have really high quality 
educational programs, for instance, educational sciences uh, as, a, as an English thought master's degree program. And, and then um, the, the Faculty of Sport and Health Sciences is a unique in Finland. It's the only faculty at the university level where you can actually study sports and health sciences uh, at the university at, 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 a, at the higher education level. So also those programs would be would be very popular uh, because of that. All right, thank you very much. Now that we've already covered the most popular majors in your respective universities, I'd like to hear more about how do you select your applicants to get admitted to your university? Because as uh, you know, the quality of Nordic universities are being recognized globally, you must have people coming from all over the world wanting to study at your place. So I'd like to hear more about that. Uh, Ms. Rika, please. Um, yes, uh, a good and important question. And, and, and uh, I would like to get started with the basic eligibility criteria that applies to uh, all our programs. So, so we offer master's degree programs in English at the moment. So, so these uh, rules apply uh, to them. And, and in order to apply, uh, the applicant has to have a, a bachelor's uh, degree or, or a higher education degree that uh, allows the applicant to, to apply for higher education. So that's the, the first step. And then uh, in all our programs, uh, basically, uh, you need to be able to prove your proficiency in English language. So, so, the, so the previous degree, which is a bachelor's level degree in most cases, and then English language certificate, which could be a TOEFL, IELTS, uh, Cambridge, uh, one of the uh, general ones. We also have our university's own uh, English language and motivation test in, in some of the programs. But I think those main things are, are the most important. And, and then, of course, depending on the program, uh, you, you have to uh, submit some other documents, such as a CV, motivational letter, uh, or, or another type of document. And in, in most of our programs, uh, an interview is part of the selection process. But once you have you, you meet the eligibility criteria and you have submitted the documentation needed in the program, then basically the academic staff evaluates uh, uh, the documentation and the best ones get selected. So, so uh, from all the applicants from around the world, from uh, within Finland and, and from all around the world, all the applicants, no matter where they come from, uh, are put in the order based on, on how well uh, they, they do based on, on the documentation and the interview. All right, thank you very much. Sounds like a very comprehensive uh, process, but I'm sure that's because you want the best. All right, uh, next, Miss Natalia. Uh, yes, thank you. The process at Hanken is very similar to the process in Uvascular University, as I believe in probably in almost all universities in Finland. Uh, but in addition to the general eligibility requirement, in addition to the bachelor's degree or a diploma that would allow you to enter the master's level in the country where you have obtained the diploma and the language requirement, we will also uh, ask to take a GMAT or GRAITES from the applicants who are applying outside of European Union. Uh, so after that, the whole package of the documents also goes to the academic evaluation. And after that, the best ones are offered the admission. At Hanken, we also for, offer the enrolling admission. It's fast track for international students, for the ones who are having a degree from outside of Finland. Uh, and there, the process is also quite similar. You will need to have a bachelor's degree, a language test, and also the GMAT test. And the GMAT test results for the enrolling admission should be higher than in, in main admission round, uh, which makes it also possible for us uh, faster to evaluate the uh, applications. And you will, in rolling admission, for example, the decision on your application will arrive in three weeks' time. All right, thank you very much. Now, uh, we've already uh, also touched upon how in Finland you'd like to uh, retain uh, the talents of the uh, international students to work in Finland as well. So I figure that this is a very interesting part that we'd like to discuss more uh, as to how does your university prepare students to enter the professional world, especially in Finland, because uh, for students to enter the professional world, it's uh, a struggle in and of itself. But 
for someone coming from a completely different country, different culture, to integrate into uh, a, the world of work in a country that's um, pretty different from their uh, home country, I think that would be a very interesting thing uh, for us to explore today as well. Uh, maybe Ms. Rika, you would like to start. Well, yeah, we 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 did um, uh, discuss some of some of the topics here, but but yes, in, indeed, um, we as a university want to uh, support uh, the the working life skills of our international students and graduates, and and offer uh, a lot of supporting courses. Um, uh, regarding entrepreneurship, regarding uh, working life skills, language skills also, if, 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 if some of them uh, seek to uh, work uh, in Finnish language, for instance. So I think uh, offering language courses is also part of, part of like, sort of enhancing their the employability uh, in Finland. So we're, we're doing a lot to offer courses, uh, interesting courses for students to attend and, and for them to, to enhance their, their own um, in employability. But at the same time, we're working with local businesses as, as a university. So I, I think that our career services and, and, and also um, I think the academic faculty uh, in, 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 in uh, different departments and, 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 and subjects work very closely uh, with, with the local employers and the Chamber of Commerce and the community, the, the, the city representatives and so on to, to create networks. And I believe that those networks then, then, then help, for instance, uh, creating perhaps internship opportunities to, to, to open, open new, new workplaces. And, and overall, I think to, to, cre um, to share and uh, learn about uh, each other. So I, I think that when the university and our staff works really closely with the with the local um, employers and the the environment in general, uh, we also let them know that we have more and more international students uh, that they could benefit from. So I think we're working both within the university with our international students and as a university together with the with the uh, stakeholders uh, around us. So. I think these would uh, enhance the employability. All right, that's very thorough. Thank you very much. Miss Natalia, would you like to add? Uh, no, I think that Rika summed it up very uh, beautifully that we, it's a it's two way street, that it's not only that the international students need to adjust to Finland, but also Finnish business world needs to understand that now the world has also changed and we need and we would like to keep the international talent. So it's also for the Finnish companies, uh, it's a very, sometimes a big cultural adjustment as well. But I think that we uh, at universities also have quite an important role here to also to benefit also with the research uh, to the co that companies understand also that it's academically proved that it's for company more beneficial to have an international and inclusive, for example, working experience for everybody who is enjoying joined the uh, working life in Finland. All right, thank you very much. Now, uh, we've uh, mentioned a fair bit about the opportunity to work uh, in Finland is actually pretty promising because the country would like to retain uh, the graduates uh, uh, that, that just uh, finished the, their studies uh, in, um, in Finnish universities. So how would the uh, outlook of uh, work opportunities in Finland after graduation like? For international students specifically, is there any uh, anything specific that they need to prepare? For example, uh, things about uh, work permits, uh, living permits, visas, and stuff like that. Maybe a Finnish language proficiency uh, or any other stuff that probably we need to know more, uh, Miss Natalia. Uh, yes, uh, it's a good and relevant question. Uh, after graduation uh, from the Finnish university, uh, graduates may apply for a residence permit for two years, if I'm not mistaken. It has changed. Previously, it was one year, but now since April, it's two years. So uh, the graduates are granted the two-year residence permit to search for the job, uh, which allows to stay legally in the country and to uh, look for the opportunities. And usually, uh, at least for Hankin, I can say that in, within the half year, most of the 
our of most of our graduates will find a job placement and after that the process is quite smooth to change the residence permit for job search to the working permit that you will allow you to leave for I, th I think it's first granted for the four years and after four years of living in Finland you may apply for permanent residence perm residence permit and uh, in uh, five years and after taking one of the uh, the language test either in Finnish or in Swedish it's also possible to apply for Finnish citizenship as well. All right thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Rika would you like to add? Well, I think Natalia already gave, gave the main points. So, so the I, I guess the most um, important and interesting information for for uh, students planning to uh, study in Finland is is to uh, I mean, two for instance, our two year master's programs. Uh, actually, two years is is quite a short time. So, of course, it's good to look further, especially if you're planning to. Um, find a job in Finland. So the most important message is, is that indeed nowadays it is possible to stay in the country for two years to look for a job. Uh, but I would just like to add that all the details and thorough instructions about all these uh, students' residence permits uh, uh, before the studies and also afterwards can be found on the Finnish Immigration Service website, uh, which we call Migri. So they have brilliant videos and, of course, uh, instructions in, in written there about the about the different types of of of, of permits needed. So uh, I think that's a good good website, uh, Nikris website to to check. Yes, and just a short note on that. I think that now during the, at least last three years, Nikri during uh, springtime have been holding online session for uh, students who have been admitted to study. So studies in Finland, of course, as we from the university side also share that information, but it's also possible for those who would still who are still considering Finland to also to join the MIGRIS questions and answers sessions because they usually cover very fully all the information you need to know on practical side and residence permit side from moving to Finland. All right, thank you very much. Now, uh, with now it's time for the uh, Q&A part of the session. We already have a few questions from the audience. Um, mostly uh, people are interested about the scholarship opportunities to study in Finland. So uh, a question from the audience is about scholarship for families. Do you have uh, any, uh, any kind of uh, family scholarship uh, seem available? Like for example, if uh, I want to study in Finland and then I think that I would like to bring my partner and my kids along with me so they can be my immediate support system while I'm, you know, uh, being away from my home country. How does that uh, look like in Finland? Uh, Ms. Natalia? Yeah, I can start. Unfortunately, we do not offer a scholarship system for the families. Mm -hmm. uh, we only offer a scholarship system for the applicant, him or herself, and also that would cover the tuition fee and uh, in some cases the additional uh, living expenses scholarship may be granted in if the student has performed uh, excellent in the previous studies but that's the financial support that the student will get i see uh what about in ifaskula uh Ms. Rita? Uh, yes, I, I, it's the same, same for us. So, so there, there are no uh, and um, no scholarships for for families, but the the scholarships are granted based on the uh, on the academic uh, sort of achievements in the, uh, that are evaluated in the in the admissions process. And and perhaps I would just like to add that that when it comes to, for instance, residence permits in that kind uh, that kind of situations where not only only the student is coming but the family i would also refer to the migri website again to to check mm -hmm. all the instructions from from there thank you very much now uh one more question on the scholarship project uh programs before uh, we continue to different uh set of questions so for uh, uh people studying in uh finland do you have any specific uh, for example, scholarship opportunities for certain sectors uh, or certain majors that you would need to work in the specific industry uh, right after graduation, or uh, is there uh, something that's more general, uh, Ms. Rika? 
Right. Well, in, in our university, basically, uh, we have the same scholarships uh, available for, for all the programs uh, by, by the university. So currently at the University of Uvascula, we have 50 percent and 100 percent uh, scholarships. And those those uh, apply uh, to all our master's degree programs in, in six, six different faculties. Uh, so. Um, no specific like field specific scholarships that would uh, sort of tie you in into a specific field or or if I understood the uh, mm -hmm. question um, correctly. Uh, however, I would uh, advise all those interested in in our programs to to check more information on our website because in our faculty of mathematics and science they do have a faculty specific. A scholarship also available in addition to the university level. So there might be some like some faculties might have uh, on, on top of our uh, uh, scholarship system at the university level. So there might be some extra opportunities for for um, for scholarships. But um, I think that would be the only exception in, in our university. All right. Thank you very much. Uh... Yeah, and at Hanken, that's the we have uh, all scholarship uh, available for all of our programs, and it will they will not tie you to anything then after the graduation. So, basically, the same situation as in Uvascular University. All right, thank you very much. Now, uh, one more question before uh, we go to the uh, latter part of the. Uh, session. So when we talk about scholarship, sometimes we uh, we think about, oh, I am still trying to apply for different scholarships. Like for some people, they probably want to uh, apply for more scholarships. So with, with, would that be possible to go for the first year as a self-funded student and then apply for scholarship applications once you already arrived and started your study. Would that be possible? Uh, Ms. Natalia, probably you can start. Uh, yes, actually that's, uh, we have a second year scholarship for the second year of master studies uh, for students who have obtained 60 credits during the first academic year. So. If you, for example, come to Hanken and study during the first year and pay the tuition fee, but you have uh, completed the 60 credits we require, you in the end of April, you fill in the uh, specific form on our web page, and that will also, of course, be provided to all the students who are subject of tuition fee. And uh, if we see that the result of the studies is sufficient in 60 credits, then you will be granted a tuition fee waiver for the second year of the studies. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Rika, would you like to add? Uh, yeah, uh, about our scholarship system, uh, again, all the details uh, are, are on our website. Uh, so just to, just to make sure that I don't give any, any false information. Uh, but basically, uh, most of our applicants um, liable to pay tuition fees uh, use the opportunity to apply for the scholarship already on the on the. Um, when applying to our university in the online form, which is very, very convenient. So, so you can actually do that at the same time as you, as you apply to our university. So you can very conveniently apply for the scholarship for the first year uh, on that application. And, and, and we have a similar system so that th those who, who reach a, a certain amount of, of, of credits then can apply for, for um, the scholarship also for the second year. Um, but all the details are are on our website. Um, of course, it's I, I always um, and, and there are not scholarships uh, obviously available for, for all the um, applicants liable to pay tuition fees. So obviously uh, self-funding is, is an opportunity uh, as well. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, we have time for one more question uh, before uh, we conclude the session. So I'd like to hear from uh, both of you. The when when you talk when we talk about international students, we talk about uh, a lot of uh, immaterial, uh, you know, richness when it comes to uh, opportunity. Like they have the. Uh, opportunity for cultural exchanges, for example, they can bring you more insight in, in the way of uh, different ways of life and, and sort of that. Uh, how do you, but on the other hand, these uh, international students uh, would also have uh, different 
uh, challenges, for example. So how would you uh, see them? Uh, what kind of uh, opportunities that you think uh, as international students they can offer in uh, Finland uh, as a well-established society so they can not only study there, but also contribute in the world of work? Uh, Ms. Rita, you can start. Uh, well, thank you for the quick question. I think you uh, also provided some of the some of the answers there uh, uh, when uh, when presenting it. I, I think it's it's the richness, like uh, uh, getting different views, getting new ideas for um, into our our own um, sort of living environments in our society, uh, different perspectives. I think it's it's a richness richness for for all of us. Uh, so definitely, uh, uh, it's an idea that I, at the university uh, we are we are uh, we want to uh, make sure that the whole society can benefit uh, from from those those uh, perspectives that come from international students that we are already pretty used to. But of course, there are uh, uh, many many um, jobs and, and and companies still that that um, are mostly occupied by by Finnish uh, employees so so I believe that this this trend uh, will change and we will all benefit from it and I have a very concrete example from my own working environment because we just recently were able to to hire a new uh, member in our student and academic services who has a background as an international student at uh, our university. So she has graduated from our university and, and, and has gained excellent Finnish skills along the way and now works um, and part of her uh, works in our university and, and part of her job is to actually uh, uh, plan and implement services for our international students. And, and, and so she has firsthand experience of, of being an international student and bringing those new ideas into, into our work community that is still mainly Finnish. So I think uh, that's a really good concrete example in, in my everyday job where I see the benefits uh, firsthand. All right, thank you very much, Ms. Rika. Uh, Ms. Natalia, would you like to add? Uh, no, I think that Rika actually covered the answer to that com quite complex question, I would say, very good. And I, what I would like to add is that Finland is the small country, and I think it's very important for the small countries to be open to the new things, because if you get stuck into your own one little circle, it will not do any benefit either to the economics or to the society. So I think it's very important to have a different perspective on the things because you might be doing one thing but there is somebody who would come from another country says but you can do it easier and faster and that's how you also improve the processes and also i think that the it's um, very important to highlight also the cultural exchange people are experiencing both from finnish side and from the uh from the foreigner side i'm also a foreigner myself who is living in the finland and i think it works perfectly all right, thank you very much. Now, before we conclude this session, I would like to invite uh, both of you to uh, for a final pitch to basically uh, tell our audience why uh, why is it uh, very promising to be a part of your university as an international student. Uh, Miss Natalia, you can start. Uh, yes, so I would like to encourage everybody on this session to apply to Hankin as we're a triple accredited business school. We have Equis, Amba and ASSB, which are the most three prestig prestigious accreditation a business school can get. We also do a lot to integrate international students who are coming to study at Hankin, uh, offering scholarships, offering internships and also courses that would help you to integrate into the society. And also Hankin. As a small university, we offer a very close connection both to the professors and to the student body and to the admin staff and the social life is really great in Finland and at Hamken. All right, thank you very much. Ms. Rita. Yes, thank you. Uh, I would also like uh, to invite uh, everyone uh, interested in, in high quality studies in Finland to apply to the University of Jyväskylä 
to our master's degree programs uh, that we offer in, in six uh, different faculties. So currently we have uh, 15 fully English taught uh, master's degree programs. Um, and because uh, we are a multidisciplinary university, I'm sure there's uh, something for any, every, anyone and everyone. And uh, as, as Natalia said, uh, studies in, in our university and universities in Finland in, in many cases are based on small group work. So it wouldn't be just mass lectures, but you would be able to build your own study path and, 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 and career track in our university. Uh, Jyväskylä is, is a really nice sized, uh, medium sized Finnish uh, city with 100 and about 45,000 uh, inhabitants and every third student here, uh, every third uh, inhabitant here is a student. So this is a true student city where uh, you can not only have high quality education, but live a really nice uh, and comfortable life with, with a lot of fellow international and, and Finnish students. So you're very welcome to apply to one of our programs. All right, thank you very much once again to uh, Ms. Rika and Ms. Natalia, our speakers from uh, fin uh, Finnish universities, and are also our audience for this afternoon's slightly and insightful session. If you have uh, any further questions, feel free to visit the university's respective websites as seen on your screen. I would like to also invite everyone attending right now to join the next session at 4 p.m. with the KU uh, Leuven, uh, University of Pax, uh, RSCI and UCD Malaysia campus and UDB Romania. Thank you very much and see you soon. Thank you and see you. Yes. Bye. Thanks and bye.